What's up, everybody, and welcome back to uh, to my little corner of YouTube, where it's time to level me up. It is crazy early here, and uh, a buddy of mine gave me some uh, pumpkin, so I'm making some pumpkin soup, which is going to be fantastic, but I'm also making some pumpkin bread, and that's what I'd like to share with you guys today. So here's kind of the recipe, and uh, yeah, I got this from allrecipe.com. You'll actually see a link to it in the description down below. First thing we're going to do is we're going to uh, grease up these pans. Um, if you've never greased up a pan before, all you need is some butter or oil and then some flour. Just coat the pan and then pour the flour basically on there. Just a little bit goes a long way, so you don't really need a whole lot. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to start mixing up our ingredients. So I actually have two bowls here. Um, I was reading about this online, using one bowl for the wet ingredients, one bowl for the... Uh, for the dry ingredients, so I'm going to try that out. And here's a look at the pumpkin. Um, so this recipe calls for pumpkin puree. Now, if you don't want to go buy like canned pumpkin, you can you know bake a pumpkin like I did. I baked it at 350 degrees for about four hours, and it comes off you know kind of nice and soft. And uh, all you have to do is just kind of put it into a food processor and puree it down. Um, the recipe calls for 15 ounces, which is about two cups. So here's our first cup. And there's my little food processor. And, uh, just gonna get that in there. Now this is really tough doing it one-handed, so we're gonna do some movie magic here, because that's just not coming out. And... Voila! There it is! So this came out, you know, pretty nice and smooth right there. Um, not very stringy like I was expecting it. Um, now, as I said here, if you've never worked with pumpkin before, I know when it's raw, it's super, super hard. But once you bake it for a couple of hours, it turns soft and mushy. I was expecting it to be a little bit more like butternut squash or um, acorn squash where it's stringy. But it's not stringy at all. It's just you know, kind of clumpy. And then here as well, you know, once you puree it down, I was expecting it to be a little bit more stringy, but it's actually just nice and smooth. <clears throat> now, you may want to shake it like I am here or use a spoon to just kind of get some of the bits. Uh, sometimes the pumpkin sticks to the top of the food, pro food processor and you just want to kind of like kick it down so that way it all gets kind of cut up and, and bunched up there. All right, so once that's good, what you're going to want to do is we'll put that in our wet bowl so that way we can mix our wet ingredients. And actually, now's the perfect time for us to preheat the oven. So we're going to preheat this for 350 degrees. And let's go back and finish mixing the rest of our wet ingredients. So we're going to get the eggs. Um, the recipe calls for four eggs. So we'll get those in there. And then here's two-thirds of a cup of water. So we'll pour that one in there. And then we're also going to pour oil in there. And for the exact measurements, you know, definitely go back to the recipe there. Once that's done, uh, I'm going to put the sugar in there because I think it needs to dissolve and this will kind of help it dissolve. Um, I'm using sugar in the raw because it's less processed. I don't really like the white processed sugar. I just feel like this one tastes better. But, um, oh, almost lost my phone there. That was scary. Whew, okay. So it looks okay. Um, not like super delectable or anything. But, uh, yeah, looks all right. Let me just check this out, make sure I've got all my dry ingredients. And we'll start mixing those. So we've got, you know, three and a half cups of flour that we're putting in this. And 
Now, I was looking there for the salt, and I don't have salt. Crazy. But here's the baking soda. Here's some cinnamon. <coughs> and, uh, sorry about the weird camera angles on some of these guys. Um, I'm still working on learning this, uh, this new video editing software that I have, and so not all the shots came out perfectly. But there was some nutmeg, the cloves, and then, last but not least, some ginger. And right here, you know, the ginger, definitely want to make sure that you're not putting in as the same amount as everything else. Ginger is going to be half a teaspoon, <coughs> and for everything else, you're going to be using two teaspoons. And boom, right there. So two of those teaspoons. Once that's done, just mix it all up. And uh, when you're done mixing it up, it kind of comes out just looking like regular flour. Like there isn't even really a difference to it. Um, it's a little bit browner, kind of like a little bit dirtier looking. But uh, yeah, there's really not, not much else going on there. Once you've got that mixed up, just mix it right into your uh, your wet ingredients. Now, I don't know if there's any science behind this or anything, like should you mix wet on dry, dry on wet. So I'm just going to kind of pour this in there. Get that last little bit there. There we go. All right, and so I'm just going to mix this up here. And this is actually kind of tough, so I, I put the camera down and mixed it all up there. Kind of turns into like a pumpkin paste. Um, or it doesn't even really look like a dough, which is why I say a paste. But tastes pretty good. Now, they say don't eat you know the raw dough because you could get salmonella from the eggs and whatnot. But uh, yeah, it tastes so good, so I see no problem with it. Anyways... We'll pot those right into those two pans, and then we will put those in the oven. Let's see. Alright, and so once those are in the oven, we are going to let these sit there, and we're going to let them bake. And we're going to set our timer, and it's going to be for 50 minutes. So we're going to let them bake for 50 minutes. Now while we wait on that, I wanted to kind of come back to the pumpkin and take care of it. <clears throat> like I said, it's all nice and soft, so you can just scoop it up with a spoon. And I hardly used any pumpkin on this. Um, I know we used, you know, 16 ounces, or 2 cups, about a pound of pumpkin. But um, I still have a lot of pumpkin left. I used over half the pumpkin in the pumpkin soup and then this. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to save this uh, just in a Ziploc bag. And if you put this in the refrigerator, it'll last, you know, two, three days. If you put this into the freezer, it'll actually last like three months um, before it starts going bad. So, you know, you can save it. You can make more pumpkin bread, more pumpkin soup more uh, pumpkin pie, there's pumpkin spice rolls, there's so much stuff you can do with pumpkin. And uh, here's a quick shot of the pumpkin all done, and I got probably about two to three pounds of pumpkin out of this. So this was a pretty good sized pumpkin, and I'm going to save this up so I can do more, probably more pumpkin bread with it, because I think the girls are really going to like it. But uh, here's a quick shot of the pumpkin bread. Um, I only have one of these to show you, because the other... I pulled the other bread out, and the girls ate it right away. Um, but I'm going to kind of end this pretty short here. I definitely want to thank you guys for taking some, time, taking some time to watch this video. Definitely hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Thank you so much for stopping by, and I hope to see you again. All right. Latest.